In the last video, we saw how easy it was uh, to use lmake to compile elm to JavaScript so we can just drop it in an HTML file. And that gave us the ability to do some CSS. In this video, we are gonna do things a little bit differently. Uh, we're gonna use NPM and we're gonna use Vite uh, and that's gonna allow us to have a much more interactive, hot reloading, uh, really rich developer experience that you might expect uh, if you're coming from a JavaScript framework like React or Vue or Svelte. Um, so enough words, let's hop in over here um, and let's kind of change up our simple setup so that it works with Vite. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, create a new uh, uh, NPM project. Earlier in this uh, series, in the installation video, we installed Node. Uh, right now I'm running Node version 20.11. Um, so I'm just going to do npm init minus y, and this is going to create a new package.json file for me. Uh, and this is going to allow me to add some JavaScript dependencies. So I'm going to do npm install, and I do uh, minus, minus save dev, minus minus exact, so that I lock in the exact version of Vite I'm using. Um, that's going to install Vite. Uh, and Vite's that dev server, that build tool uh, that all the cool kids are using. Oops. Uh, looks like I didn't use the right flag for exact. I usually use um, the shorthand for this, minus D and minus E. Um, so that's going to give us the latest version of Vite. Uh, I'm also going to install Vite plugin Elm Watch. So this is going to be the plugin uh, that we use. This is a plugin I made a few months ago um, because uh, I was really inspired by Elm Watch, uh, a tool in the Elm community that has a really nice uh, hot reloading experience. I think you guys are going to like this one. Um, so we have Vite installed, we have Vite plugin Elm Watch. Uh, the way we're going to set up Vite is we're going to make a Vite config. Uh, so I'm going to import uh, define config uh, from Vite, and then I'm going to import Elm from Vite plugin Elm Watch. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is export the default where we define this config, and we're gonna just add in a plugin uh, for Elm. So all this is doing is saying, hey, I'm creating a new V project, um, and I want to include this Elm plugin. And what the Elm plugin is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to import Elm files directly. No need for Elm make, no need to run anything in the terminal here. We're just gonna run our Vite server, uh, and then it's gonna use this index HTML entry point uh, for, it, for it to work. So I'm gonna get rid of this dist elm.js. I'm going to leave this id app thing in here, but I'm going to delete this dist folder uh, that we had in the last video. We're not going to need that anymore. Um, and we're just going to use uh, Vite directly. I'm also going to import style.css uh, from our Vite um, project. So here I'm going to say type module, and then we're going to create uh, an entry point at main.js. And this is going to be uh, what Vite is going to use when it runs um, our program. I'm just going to make a folder here called uh, assets, and that's where I'm going to put this style.css file. Don't ask me again. I know. I know what, to, what I'm doing. Uh, cool. So here we can say import uh, assets style.css. And I think if we do this, we'll see the black background, npx feet. Oopsies. What did I do wrong? Oh, you know what? Um, Vite 5.0 needs a uh, type module uh, for it to work. So I run that. Uh, we've got a new Vite server running on localhost 5173. Um, so what we're seeing is our CSS is showing up. We've got that gray background. You know, if we want it to be pink, uh, there it is. It's pink. And we're getting a really fast, hot reloading experience here. Um, so as I change stuff, um, we're going to see it change real time. So I'm going to undo this, saving, boom, it's instant. Beat is really nice. Um, so what I want to be able to do is in my main.js file, just like I imported the CSS file, I want to be able to import main from uh, source slash main.elm. Um, so when I do that, what I can do is I can do the same thing we did before, main.init, uh, and then tell it what node I want it to inject itself into. So again, we're gonna use that app node that we saw before, and boom, uh, no Elm make command necessary. Uh, we found the Elm program, and what's really cool about this is I can have this timer running, and I can change my Elm program, 
and uh, real time I can change labels like you know seconds and I can save and it'll update my app real time as it's still running so notice that this uh, Elm debugger never stopped uh, it is still uh, running I can roll my die um, so I'm rerolling dice I can you know delete this and my timer is still running my buttons are still there I can develop my Elm program and as soon as I make a mistake like doing this instead of button, I'm gonna get a really nice error message. I'm super zoomed in because I'm making a tutorial, um, but I get error messages like this. Uh, and what's cool about the Vite plugin that we have set up is you can also jump directly to the problem. So if I click this, it's gonna open up my editor and hop directly uh, to the issue that I made. So even if I close this, don't save, um, if I click jump to problem, it's gonna go boom, the problem's on line 104 save that and instantly fixes it and I don't lose my state. Uh, this is all thanks to uh, Simon Lydell's work on Elm Watch. Uh, I just did a bit of uh, work to make this a Vite plugin. Uh, but this is available um, if you want to check it out. Um, Vite plugin Elm Watch. Uh, let me see. It's very new so Google just doesn't even doesn't even know about it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It really doesn't like it. This is like the most secret GitHub project of all time. Um, so feel free to check it out. Uh, Ryan-Haskell, Vite plugin Elm Watch. It's got two issues. It's pretty sick. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll it'll walk you through all this stuff that you saw in this video. But this is getting set up uh, with Elm and Vite. Uh, we're going to be using this for the rest of the series uh, because we're going to um, start to use this app property and start to use this init function. Um, so that we can communicate with our Elm app, send it some data from JavaScript, and also respond to events coming from it and have like a really nice uh, interaction uh, with an existing you know, JavaScript app or with existing browser APIs. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.